Thank you for joining us today. My name is Samira Tilly, Marketing Manager at Assemble Systems. In our flash briefing today, we are going to share with you upcoming functionality in Assemble that will allow you to do even more with BIM data. Now let's get started. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Tim Kelly, Director of Partnerships at Assemble. Go ahead, Tim. Thanks, Samira. Um, so today I'm going to run through our agenda really quick. We're going to dive into just a brief introduction of Assemble. And then we're going to talk about our class editor concept. I know uh, some of you have heard us talk about this in the past. And we want to talk about the um, overall concept as well as some of the upcoming functionality. Um, and then we'll do a brief uh, review of uh, some of the sub-instance data and non-modeled items this will drive, as well as demo the functionality. Uh, so with that, Assemble, uh, Assemble Systems is a cloud-based product to manage model-based data, uh, point clouds, and other drawing content. Um, so we uh, categorize ourselves as a system of engagement uh, because we allow you to bring other data sets into one uniform environment, condition that, organize it the way you need for your workflow, and connect with a number of other users and systems across uh, your project team. Uh, with that, um, just kind of a quick walkthrough of how we actually access uh, we're totally web-based, so there's no need for downloading products and installing things. Um, we're we're um, accessible on the web, so for the vast majority of your users, it's simply a login to get access and to organize all of the data, the visual content, as well as your property information uh, behind that data. We have approximately um, 13,000 projects that have been completed inside of a symbol, and that's across a little over uh, 10,000 users. Um, we're in about a thousand construction offices across the United States and around the world. Um, and we have some key well, workflows and partnerships that we integrate with, uh, specifically listed here, Autodesk, Sage, Procore, uh, Oracle, and I Square Foot. Uh, there are another uh, number of other integrations that we're working through, and that's kind of around the concept of uh, what we organize ourselves around as a system of engagement. And <clears throat> we want to allow for all of those systems uh, to uh, talk together and um, allow you to aggregate your information in, in a, a seamless interface. So jumping into specifically the class editor over, what we want to allow for, and, and as a system, we, we've talked a lot about conditioning in the past and, and what we kind of categorize that as is making ready for use. So if I condition something, I'm adding some coding structure uh, that might be specifically related to uh, estimating or might be related to scheduling or whatever your function is that you're getting that data organized for. Um, we've had for a long time a request to do more with expanding our capabilities on, on calculations and uh, numerical values and, and that's what we're working through here. Uh, we want this class editor to be uh, kind of a an input of rule-based calculations and classifications of your model content. Um, that's going to be both on the actual assembly or the model instance itself, as well as uh, allow for additional non-modeled objects or sub-assemblies from there. Um, we want to bring that data in from other sources that you may have. So if you have some potentially some estimating database structure where uh, you rely on <clears throat> assembly information and you want those material quantities to be captured and brought into your your model workflow, um, that's that's where this is going to be engaged. Um, and then we also allow, want to allow for um, this, this idea to be executed on uh, when you publish content into the system. So I upload a new model, we automatically run rules and uh, walk through those calculations um, uh, in the back end, as well as um, allow for that, to set, that same event to happen when properties are edited or updated by the users or changes occur when you publish new revisions of your model. Uh, so today uh, we're working towards allowing for um, management of exactly when those rules are executed. Uh, your team will be able to create a, a table of different things that will occur, um, properties that will be added, and um, we'll be building out the capability of uh, when those uh, particular rules are uh, run or executed on each uh, property set. Some examples of how we've done this in the past and how it already interacts with our system. We do currently have some 
um, rules that occur under the cover under the covers. Um, on the left, you're going to see an example. This is something that we've had um, in our product. Uh, the duration of uh, assemble systems is the ability to on structural members calculate uh, the tonnage or, or weight by length or weight by volume. And, and what we're doing is looking for specific properties uh, and values and then um, running calculations based on what's occurring. Um, so in this case, kind of it steps through if, if there's a structural member and we identify the, cat, the categories there and it has a WT property, uh, then we run a calculation. If we don't see a WT property, then we go through a few steps to actually get to the point of running a calculation for your total tonnage of structural steel. Um, we have a number of other of these that are occurring under the covers, but the idea is that we want to give you uh, the, the control of managing what rules are interacting with your model sets and, and what information you're adding, what type of properties or data you're putting in there. Another example of how different properties interact is the way our assembly codes work today. You can select objects and apply an assembly code, and based off uh, an assembly code table that you've populated in your project, you can also then apply the unit of measure you want to specify, the unit cost associated to that, as well as a, a level of uh, development uh, required. With that, you can determine when the quantity and the unit costs are updated, whether it be on an item by item basis in the case that you're applying the, the assembly code or uh, at an overall run that you've already applied assembly codes and you actually execute it across all of the values in the project. In this case, with our assembly codes and with assembly codes being based in uh, Revit, these are type properties. What we're going to be doing is moving this tree structure and architecture around coding uh, trees um, out of our type-based parameters and allow you to do that within uh, simple properties as well. So that would make it instance-based and give you a structure to identify uh, this instance-based property interaction where you can do it level by level or um, like multiple coding structures for each object for, for different uh, pre-construction -con pre uh, or estimating mechanisms or uh, scheduling or whatever it might mean that you need to apply these to. We can set up the rules around this tree structure and have multiple values assigned at the same time. Diving in a little deeper, going further down below the instance level, uh, what you're also going to be able to do in the near future is actually apply rule-based materials and events uh, below or create an additional line on below the instance. In this case, you're actually looking at a screenshot of us capturing Revit materials and bringing those in as well as the instances or the assemblies themselves. Um, and so you have the ability now to roll that up by the material um, in the near future by the event or by the instance itself. From there, the same rule organization and structure will be applied so that you can step down below an instance level and say, I want to look for this particular material, and when this material is present, I want to apply this rule. So you'll have the capability to interact with things that are either not modeled um, and they're based on model content, and I'll show an example of that in just a second here, or apply um, multiple activities or events below an instance as well. So I'm going to jump in really quick and show a brief demo of the interaction. So what we have here in the class editor is the idea around creating rules that are based on filters. Uh, so in this case, I want to update a property for formwork. And I have the idea that I can uh, drill in and apply, and let's say I have family name and value here. Um, and I can apply other filters on that content as well. So if I want to more specifically drill into uh, what this type or grade beam is before I create formwork, I can say, let's spe uh, specify, um, I only want to apply these at the foundation plan level. So I have the ability to either just create one and go search for the properties, or since this is a property I've selected, I can create a quick filter on that and say, this is the property and the value, and that's going to inherit that as part of this rule. What I can then do is specify which existing quantities or properties that are coming out of the model that I want to rely on to create my calculation here. So in this case, I have H, and I'm going to just go select that again uh, and show pulling that over. Um, so I have my height of the grade beam, and what I'm looking for is the formwork on either side of this particular grade beam. So I'm going to take the height, 
multiply it by the length and then times two. Um, so I'm just grabbing the property and applying it to the formula here. So I'm going to do height times length times two. And I can get just a quick result check here. Um, and that's, that's it. So I've built out a rule and I can save this out and, and re, uh, come back to that rule again and again on this project or on other projects that have the same value sets here. Uh, to push this information up and synchronize it with your data set inside of a symbol, we're going to either run individual rules and calculate that rule or run all the rules. To, to go through the step of actually building this out, it's just very straightforward of uh, specifying the property. And each of these properties can now be numeric values or uh, text or a, a unit of measure. So we can actually end the property definition to find it as a length or an area, et cetera. And that'll give you the ability to aggregate those quantities that you're defining. In this case, we've actually taken uh, our interior partitions and we've created a breakout of the assembly uh, values that you would see in a typical estimating database. Uh, that's going to give you the definition of your sheetrock studs, uh, screws, tape float, et cetera. And, and all of this information is then going to be pushed up into a symbol. Uh, what you're going to see on the assemble side, let's go land in that same view once I've published that information, is all of our quantities broken out by the individual calculations and materials that I've shown uh, we've created rules for. Within the property set here, what you're going to see is um, it's, it's directly pushed that up to our properties. Uh, what you'll see in the very near future, and you're going to see some of that here, is within our properties as we're adding more and more property types and, and giving more flexibility around what you want to create or what you can create inside of the properties, we're also going, going to give the ability to roll up those assembled properties so that you can break them out by um, maybe your estimating assemblies, your scheduling data, et cetera. Um, so, so the concept here is that you can then uh, take quantities or information here and, and, and roll that up to... Uh, uh, a higher level so you're not seeing you know, 30 or so properties all, all listed as one. We're working through this with a number of our customers today, um, but one of my main reasons I wanted to, to, to get in front of you guys and start sharing this is uh, we, we'd love to have your feedback. Let us know specifically, one, if this interests you, uh, and then two, what specific cases you might have in mind. I know today we talked a lot about you know, estimating and breaking down assemblies of components and, and into a more detail uh, level. Uh, we've also started talking through the process with a number of, of uh, uh, customers around how this associates to scheduling where in the case that I might have a grade beam that has multiple schedule activities and I want to associate data to each of those in a rule-based fashion. Uh, so you have a grade beam that has, um, you know, dig or excavate, then uh, reinforce, then form work, then pour, whatever that might be. We want to understand more about what, what you guys think this applies to and what might be beneficial for us to consider as we step through this. So um, uh, please, please do let us know uh, what you, you think about different workflows and use cases you see here.